What is up, Hardcore Nation? It's Hardcore Christopher here, and today I'm going to be reacting to From Triple Jump 10 video games that would make great musicals. Now, at the end of my reaction, I will be doing a little programming note, so be sure to stick around for that. And let's get right into this. There's no business like show business, but there's no business I know better than video games. But that doesn't mean I don't like some thi- Oh, come on. You couldn't sing that out. You could have said, there's no business like show business. Except that's the only business I know. The video game business, the video game business is the only business I know. Something like that. Lazy. Get her. In my life, I've seen two musicals, by the way. That's just what it says in the script. In recent years, musicals have gotten increasingly popular with the masses, with the likes of Hamilton, Beetlejuice, Hades Town, and even SpongeBob the Musical becoming massive hits over the. What? Um. Is that a thing? Is. Is SpongeBob a. Is SpongeBob SquarePants a musical? Is 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 that a thing? Somebody, somebody, let me know. Uh, I don't know why you would make SpongeBob SquarePants into a musical. Doesn't doesn't seem like it would make good material. At least for me. In my in my opinion. Old school shows. Now pre-existing properties are becoming successful musicals, it isn't that difficult to imagine a video game being turned into an all-singing, all-dancing spectacular on stage at some point in the future. Now you may say that this is a very self-indulgent list on the part of our writer, and you'd be correct, but she's been stuck inside for the last- Um, so does that mean this list is gonna be biased? Last couple of months and half existing entirely off musicals and Jacob's Cheddars, so cut her some slack. Anyway, I'm Ben from Trip. No slack is cut it here. Oh jump. And here are ten video games that would make great musicals. Number ten. Undertale. The story of a child who falls into the underworld and is met with a large cast of monsters may seem to be a bit of a tall task to put on stage, especially considering a lot of the late game is very meta about it being a video game. But by manipulating the three ways to play the game, the pacifist, genocide, and neutral route, where you can kill no one, kill everyone, and kill some people, to create a more coherent plot, it could potentially work as a single narrative thread. Additionally, lots of Toby original songs could easily be reworked to suit lyrics and dance breaks or even have brand new songs written in. When it comes to the staging and costumes, the majority of the characters are not in any way human, ranging from skeletons and ghosts to fish ladies, giant rabbits, and whatever this is. While it may be tempting to resort to... Okay, I've never played Undertale. Um... And... It's an RPG style, so I don't think... I don't like RPGs to begin with. They're way too tedious. You have to grind, and... Then you have to upgrade your equipment just to do it all over again. Um... But from what... He's saying... Doesn't make a lot of sense, but then again, I haven't heard any of the soundtrack and... Well, soundtracks, excuse me. And I haven't heard... And I haven't played the game, so I don't really know what he's talking about here. Giant mascot costumes, there have been a few recent shows that have gone more abstract with turning cartoon characters into more believable human casts. If the Spongebob musical can capture Spongebob's square look with a pair of... Oh! Good. Okay, well, I just re I just got my answer, and, uh... 
No. Never do this again. That is in order. Dungarees, a sandy spacesuit with an afro, and bring Squidward to life with an extra pair. What? Sandy is a squirrel. You could have just. I don't know, have a squirrel costume? You couldn't have a... You couldn't have a Squidward costume made? You couldn't have... A Spongebob costume? Ah. What's the point of making SpongeBob SquarePants human if they're not human? I mean, you have Mr. Krabs, who is a crab. You have... You have Plankton, who is a... One-eyed... Small... Radioactive... Um, a barnacle, I guess you'd call him. You have Squidward, who's a squid. You have Gary, who is a meowing snail, which doesn't make any sense. You have Patrick Star, who is, well, a sea star. This makes no sense, and I don't like it. ...of legs, then it's possible to have a papyrus that doesn't look like a cheap Halloween costume. Cosplayers have been doing it for years, after all. Number 9. Bioshock. The first two games in the Bioshock series can be summed up with the single word, grimy. Boom. Set in the underwater, abandoned, failed utopia of rapture, the first game follows a man, Jack, through the moldy and leaky city to find its leader, Andrew Ryan, whilst also battling insane surgeons, artists, and scientists. Prime material for a musical. The plot itself isn't that complicated, with Jack, after his plane crashes, finding himself guided through the city by the mysterious Atlas and defeating the numerous insane citizens along the way. While musicals are usually seen as fluffy or melodramatic, there has been a resurgence of grittier shows, meaning that the scariness of the plot wouldn't have to be toned down. In fact, it could easily be increased with some more fleshing out of the secondary villains and the monstrous inhabitants of Rapture. With only three main characters in Jack, Andrew, Ryan, Atlas, and a handful of named secondary characters, this show could be carried by the large ensemble cast of Splicers. Like a demented Phantom of the Opera, they are already colorfully dressed in tattered and twisted outfits. It's their manic movements easily being reimagined into choreography as they dance around Jack and Ragdoll as he defeats them one by one. Turns out rabbit masks and lace dresses aren't particularly good against bullets or electricity. Who'd have thought? I've never played Bioshock. I've watched it. I've watched Bioshock be played on YouTube, but as Far as a musical. No! Something tells me I'm gonna probably have to come up with my own top ten list. Just, just after... And I already have two in mind. So, let's keep on going. Next up is God of War. Well, wait. Which God of War? Get out of here with that. God of War. From Arthurian legend with Camelot to modernized reimaginings of Greek mythology with My Fair Lady and Hades Town. Mythology, folk, and fairy tales have always been an inspiration for musicals. Even Peter Pan, which was originally written as a stage production before becoming a novel, continues to enter. Fun fact. Hold on. 
Town. Mythology, folk, and fairy tales have always been an inspiration for music. Okay. Fun fact. The motion capture and the, uh... And the model that they used for Kratos in the most recent video game was done by Shad Gaspard. Even Peter Pan, which was originally written as a stage production before becoming a novel, continues to entertain people every Christmas Pato season. Now, Queen God of War mythology is a bit of a stretch. First, you need to cut off my head. Wait, what? But it is definitely heavily influenced by it, although it is hardly what you might call faithful to the original source material. Okay. Here's another fun fact. Peter Pan was... Peter Pan... was dark. Extremely dark. And I don't understand how Disney would take a... some... Peter Pan... some... if I can untwist my tongue here. Um... I don't understand how Disney... could... Make something as dark as Peter Pan become uh, become become so light hearted and children friendly. Ancient Greek society may have worked out slightly differently, after all, if all of their gods had been slaughtered by a raging man-mountain in one fell swoop. However, while the first few games are a more furious beat-em-up through the Greek pantheon, the 2018 remake has more heart and a strong emotional core through Kratos mourning the death of his wife and bonding with his son. A few nice ballads could definitely be made out of that. Also, there have been no major musicals using any of the hundreds of stories of the chaotic lives of the Norse gods. Not even the one where Thor wears a wedding dress to beat up a giant who stole his hammer, which personally would be the first one I'd adapt. Number 7. The Legend of Zelda Okay. Again, I've never played God of War. I've, I've watched God of War be played. Uh This list isn't this list isn't doing it for me. Um so you have Undertale. You have BioShock. And you have God of War. The Legend of Zelda, I agree, could be a musical. They got one right. The Legend of Zelda series has never been tied down to one linear narrative across its games, with almost every title bringing in a new version of the characters into the world. It sure is boring around here. My lord, oh, this oh, good god, why did they have to go for the CDI version? CDI, you sucked. And I never played you. I make it extremely difficult for video game lore experts to pin down any kind of cohesive timeline. It makes it extremely easy to fit in new versions of the characters without having to follow any of the plots of the previous games. You have the helpful little green boy Link, his BFF Forever Zelda, and the big mean guy Xanadu, I mean Ganondorf, who wants to rule the world of Hyrule. And that's all you need for a good Zelda plot. Bringing leafy green fantasy to the stage has been done a few times before in shows such as the short-lived Tuck Everlasting and Lord of the Rings musical, and the more successful Into the Woods. The hardest decision would, of course, be Will Link Sing? With a fan musical of Portal 2 surviving without a speaking main character, it is doable, and considering the last time he said anything other than huh, still haunting the fandom to this day, it may be They made Portal 2 into a musical? Well... I guess... I guess Broadway must be running out of ideas. 
best if he keeps his trap shut. I just saved you from Ganon. You did not. I won. Number six. Five Nights at Freddy's. Feed me pizza. Horror musicals are another surprising genre. I could see it. We got two, right? The non-musical fans don't really realize exist, but there are several. The Little Shop of Horrors, Adam's Family, Carrie, Jackal and Hyde, and even Beetlejuice if you consider Goss to be horror. Stay away from me, Mona! Calling Five Nights at Freddy's an indie game anymore feels bizarre, considering how saturated the market is with merchandise, fan costumes, and knockoff games, both fan-made and professional. However, with the movie still in perpetual development, as it probably will be until the end of time, a stage production could potentially prove to be a hit. FNAF has always had a certain element of being tongue-in-cheek, or rather, tongue in endoskeleton, and an ultra-serious take would probably miss the mark. However, like Little Shop of Horrors, a FNAF musical could utilize puppetry to create the movements of the animatronics, although they would probably have to talk this time. Including characters like the Purple Guy, Phone Guy, and the Afton family would bring more characters to the stage than just a single security guard. The animatronic characters could establish themselves as individual personalities and really <laughs> come out of their shell. Number 5. Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, so Arthur Morgan or any of the other hardened cowboys wouldn't really be seen dead dancing around joyfully in a Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical, but as I said previously, serious musicals aren't necessarily rare. A musical version of Red Dead wouldn't have to be as comedic or light-hearted as Oak. Red Dead Redemption 2. Never played it. But why a musical? Explain, Triple Jump. Oklahoma, but that show would provide a good framework in terms of setting, as well as the more serious Fiddler on the Roof, which isn't exactly a western, but it's still about a dusty farmstead owned by a man with a beard, so close enough, I say. Horses and other animals have been brought to the stage before, so having the animals and the scenery of the Wild West transferred to a theatre wouldn't be that hard, though it might be difficult to recreate the ragdolling during the rousing and emotional ballad, My Horse Keeps On Running Into Trees. <laughs> but who would we get to play Rooty Tooty McCowboy Shooty himself, Arthur Morgan? Well, the good news is everyone's favourite PE teacher turned stage and screen star, Huge Jacked Man, is returning to the theatre after hanging up his claws. So he would definitely get the pick of the bunch for bearded cowboy characters. Number four, Assassin's Creed. Wow. Okay, first off, Hugh Jackman not doing Wolverine any anymore. Sucks. Second, um, good job, Triple Jump, for, for that explanation. I just don't think it'd work. Third, Good God, that assassin looks creepy. This one is kind of obvious. The Assassin's Creed series has covered a vast range of time periods, from the Crusades and Pirates to ancient Egypt and 16th century Italy. But the setting that seems all too familiar, in a musical sense anyway, is Assassin's Creed Unity, following a bunch of plucky young men through revolutionary France. Well, okay, Assassin's Creed covers the French Revolution of 1789, while Les Miserables' June Revolution takes place 33 years later in 1832, but that makes it even better. Have it act as a prequel. Then, after Assassin's Creed the musical ends, the audiences can venture over the roads to the other theatre to see how it all ended up almost half a century later. But with less of this. Problem solved. If Assassin's Creed didn't want to compete with the second longest running and fifth highest grossing musical of all time, then there are plenty of other historic periods to choose from. Fittingly, there is already a musical that covers the topic of historical assassins, literally called Assassins, which has a number of famous American murderers meet each other in a shooting gallery. Additionally, there have been several other musicals based upon real-life historical events or time periods, including War Horse, Bonnie and Clyde, and of course, Hamilton. Number three. Resident Evil. Michael Jackson's thriller really set. Ah, uh, Assassin's Creed. No. Resident Evil. Depending on which Resident Evil you're talking about. Because Resident Evil is pretty broad.
The bar quite high for the quality of singing and dancing that zombies are expected to achieve, when in reality they're slow, shambling, and don't have a particularly good sense of rhythm or personal style. Ooh, bin bag chic. Love it. While the Umbrella Corporation isn't limited to creating zombie plagues, the majority of the things they do create are very intent on destroying everything they find, having to be stopped before they wage their carnage across the planet. Because of Umbrella Corp's versatility, the plot wouldn't necessarily have to be taken straight from one of the games, instead taking inspiration from them while making it into an entirely new plot. Aiding the restricted nature of the theatre, most of the Resident Evil games take place in a central location, either a mansion, a laboratory, or underground tunnels and sewers. Bringing an apocalyptic event to the stage isn't a small feat, especially when attempting to create the feeling that the threat is all-encompassing while being confined inside a theatre. Little Shop of Horrors, Evil Dead the Musical, and Star Kids the Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals have all managed to create a convincing end-of-the-world threat with either zombies, hive-mind body snatchers, or man-eating alien plants, all of which... Here's the thing. Little Shop of Horrors was a musical to begin with. You can... It was actually a screen... It was actually a musical before it became a movie. And the reason why they had to change the ending of the movie is because, well, people did not like when... Uh, Audrey and Seymour died at the at the mouth of the plant. I was gonna say the hands, but that didn't that wouldn't make any sense. Um, as I I guess a Resident Evil musical could work if they did it like Thriller, but even even then Thriller wasn't a musical it was just a song so you would have a lot to live up to I'm like something that the umbrella corporation would have a hand in number two aliens colonial marines now one of the worst games turned into a musical okay I know what you're thinking why Aliens Colonial Marines of all games? Why not any of the other numerous alien fighting games that have been released over the years? Well, it got your attention, didn't it? Would you like to look at my jam? Since its disastrous launch in 2013 and years of ridicule over a single typo in its AI coding, I think it's high time that this video game reclaimed some of its street cred. And it's totally not that I'm putting it on this list because Good lord, no. I'm dying for an alien musical in this- Alien colo Alien Colonial Aliens Colon Colonial Marines was bad and it and it died and it should stay dead. So no musical for this one. This was the first video game version I thought of. Oh, wait, there was a much better one, wasn't there? It's so menacing, yeah. Lighting effects can do amazing things on stage. Yeah, Alien Isolation could actually work as a musical. I mean, you're all alone. With a xenomorph. Uh, you could do that. Making people appear as if out of nowhere and hiding things that they don't want you to see. I can't actually see it. It's so dark. It's really dark, isn't it? While not a musical, the Woman in Black stage play is amazing at making you jump at literally nothing and also ruined my childhood, but that's not the point. And like Alien, the ambience of the setting is the main source of the skin. Uh, what's the Woman in Black? A lot of larger theatres have impressive set pieces surrounding the stage with Matilda's letter blocks and Spongebob's Rube Goldberg machines. Having the stage for aliens surrounded by chains and pipes will not only set the scene but also hide the alien throughout the show. You aren't just watching the characters fight the alien after all, you yourself are trapped with it too. So they're not actually going to dance. It couldn't be bothered though. Again, no. There okay. goes. <laughs> Number one. Cuphead. Inspired by the- Okay. Cuphead, I could definitely see. 
Fleischer and Walt Disney Studios' 1930s animations, Cuphead, like Undertale, is defined by its music, the collector's edition even coming with vinyl records of the soundtrack. Because of this and the vast cast of colourful characters and an overarching threat of the devil and his henchman King Dice, adapting Cuphead for the stage would be relatively easy. With its swing-style music, a Cuphead musical would harken back to the old Top Hat and Tails musicals of, well, Top Hat and Anything Goes, as well as fitting in nicely alongside the musical Mac and Mabel, which is set around the same time period in the more human-centric Hollywood. The run and guns and the boss battles that take up the majority of the game would have to be changed for more dialogue-based interactions rather than having the main characters constantly shooting at each other with their fingers, and the characters, which are all trapped in contracts with the devil, could have their backstories not so much... I guess you could call it a finger bang. Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. Expanded as created in the first place. While only a few of the characters are what we would call human, the same abstract costuming used in SpongeBob the Musical, The Lion King, or pretty much any Disney stage musical could recreate the various crockery, vegetables, frogs, robots, dragons, giant flowers, and blimp moon witches that inhabit the world. And that's our list. What video game would you like to be adapted to the stage? Let us know in the comments below. You can. Okay. Okay. I got ten video games that I think could be turned into musicals. So let's start off number ten. Number ten. Osiris Wrath. Number nine. Shrek the Third, which was a video game. Number eight, Crash Bandicoot. Number seven, Final Fantasy. More like Final Fantasy 7. Number 6. Dante's Inferno. Which I know was a... Which is a video game. Number 5. Saints Row, get out of hell. Number four. Mm. Number four, Crazy Taxi. Number three, The Simpsons. The si yeah, The Simpsons. Hit and run. Number two. Killer is dead. And last, but certainly not least, number one. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Number one. Well, how about Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat 9 to begin to uh, 
save everybody some time. But that was my reaction. I also said that I do a little programming out. So I have decided because even though I love even though I love doing these reactions, I have some I have some other videos that I want to make, so uh, I will come back to reactions next week. Don't worry, I'm not I'm not changing the direction of my channel or anything like that. Uh, I'm just gonna be doing some reactions, but right now I I will admit I'm I'm having I'm having really. I'm having a really fun time with these reactions, and I hope to do more. It's just with all the uh, with all the videos I want to make right now, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. So I will come back to reactions next week. So. In the meantime, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, yes, I will be uploading on Saturday, even though it is the 4th of July. Um, actually, actually, here's what I'm going to do, now that I'm thinking about this. Each week, I'm going to dedicate three days to one video that I will do a reaction to. Um, so, three days out of the week are reactions, so I'm going to have that be I don't know yet, um, but I hope to see you all soon. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm Hardcore Christopher. Keep it hardcore, everyone.